So, Vivek Shreya. Wait, no, no, okay. Before I start, I have to address the elephant in the room. Even though it's an elephant that only I can see, I cannot make this video knowing that the elephant exists behind the camera. And this elephant takes the form of my partner's grandparents. <laughs> so Jess got a text message from her nan saying that she and her husband follow your blog but concerned no travel, only books on gays and transes, you okay? <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, when they say blog, I think they mean this channel, because on our blog, on our main website, we don't have that many books on queer people, gay people, trans people. We do have a lot of new travel content on there that's written by us and other writers. But anyway, so I think they mean the videos. And also the concerned no travel. I can't wait for them to turn on the news and see what's been going on for the last year and a half that might explain why we haven't got any new travel content. They are going to be shocked. <laughs> Only books on gays and transes. And the reason that I have to bring up this elephant now and address this is because this is another video about books on gays and transes. <laughs> so that's my new Twitter bio sorted. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> I hope you're doing well. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the books of Vivek Shreya, a trans woman. Oh, cishet people are bonkers, especially the old ones. Okay, Vivek Shreya is a Toronto-based Canadian musician, writer, and professor. A very, very cool individual. About a week ago, I was in London. I sat in this little Danish cafe, and from cover to cover, I read I'm Afraid of Men by Vivek Shreya, which is a non-fiction memoir-esque, manifesto-esque type of thing. Then, straight after, I read Vivek Shreya's novel, The Subtweet, which is everywhere at the moment. Lots of people are reading it, lots of people are loving it. My partner read it, she said, you've got to read this, it's fantastic. So I thought, yeah, I've read her non-fiction, let's read some of her fiction. What I noticed from reading both of these is that Vivek Shreya is capable of encouraging empathy in her readers, more than a lot of other writers that I've come across, there is something about the way that she writes that really encourages empathy. And I want to explore that a little bit. What do I mean by that? How is it done? And maybe even how can other writers do the same kind of a thing? Because literature inspires empathy. That is one of its main functions, arguably. Most of us as readers know this to be true. But why and how does Vivek Shreya manage to do it better than a lot of others, at least from what I've read so far? Let's talk about it. I'm going to start with I'm Afraid of Men because that's what I started with. This is a tiny little 80-page non-fiction memoir slash manifesto. I found this particularly empathetic because it spoke directly to me and a lot of my own personal experiences. It was easy for me to empathize with this book because more than a lot of other pieces of nonfiction, a lot of other memoirs that I've read, to put it bluntly, I felt seen by her own experiences. A lot of what she was saying lined up with my own personal experiences. Vivek Shreya came out as transgender around the age of 35. Before that, she was passing as a gay man. I'm 31, and I've spent the last two years exploring my gender identity and coming out as non-binary. I've talked about this before, I talk about it a lot, and I will continue to talk about it because I love it, and I love myself now more than I have ever in my life, and that's cause for celebration. The same can be said for Vivek Shreya, I think, but what we have here is a memoir that explores her childhood, her work, her personal relationships, romantic relationships, and various little experiences as examples of why men, masculinity, are such frightening things, hence the title I'm Afraid of Men, and I empathize with this hugely. When I was young, and even today, I pass as a man, and I have been terrified of men and masculinity, always. It's very easy for me to pass as a cishet man, and my fear of men kind of betrays that, as does my eyeshadow. But this has been a thing that has existed for my entire life. I am so terrified of masculinity. Even though sometimes it's very difficult to describe masculinity beyond a surface level interpretation. Masculinity is something that is aggressive and loud and boisterous. Masculinity is something that inspires aggression. Even something very simple and pathetic as saying that masculinity is cheering and whooping and chanting at a football match. 
these things still don't really get to the heart of masculinity, but they are all symptomatic of masculinity and they all do represent examples of things that I'm afraid of. As a non-cisgender person and as a human being, there are aspects of masculinity that just intimidate me. The way that men walk, the way that men talk, the words that men use, they frighten me. And Vivek Shreya explores all of those same things, giving personal examples and a little bit of a manifesto on how we can change these things and how we can, as a society, have a better relationship with masculinity if men allowed themselves to listen, which they often don't. So the reason that this is so empathetic to me is because I feel so seen by this book. I'm afraid of men. Vivek Shreya is afraid of men. We both have our personal examples as to why that is. And to say that you're afraid of all men is ridiculous. A lot of my friends are cis men, cishet men. I do masculine things all the time. I demonstrate masculine traits. We all do irrespective of our sex, gender, sexuality, etc. We all demonstrate masculine things from time to time, and saying I'm afraid of men is a little bit of an exaggerated statement, but it's still true, even if it is exaggerated. So the empathy there is just very personal to me, but I struggle to think that a person wouldn't find empathy in this book because these are very honest and personal things. And I think that as a memoir, even as a memoir, this is a very personal text. People often write memoirs from the heart. Memoirs are often very, very personal things. But Vivek Shreya really wears her heart on her sleeve when she talks about this. The language that she uses, the bluntness of her words is very emotive, it is very strong and Horse. You can't help but feel sorry for her, at the very least. She is inspiring empathy simply by being honest and truthful, aware of herself, and unaware of the other people around her. She doesn't really care how you're going to react to this. This is her truth, these are her experiences. She isn't lying, she isn't exaggerating, she's telling honest truths. These are her experiences. Here they are. This is how she feels, this is what she sees, this is how she has experienced life. That is empathy. If you sit and listen for five minutes to another person tell a very personable and intimate story about something negative that's happened to them, you're gonna feel upset. You're gonna wanna cry on their behalf. And I felt that with I'm Afraid of Men. And again, I felt it in particular because I felt seen by this book, but anyone will. My partner did. She felt so much from this book. Again, you can bring your own personal experiences to this. Of course, she's had a thousand awful experiences with men and masculinity in her life, and that's part of the reason why this is so empathetic, is because it is speaking to personal experiences and relatable things, while also being honest about itself. Now let's talk about the subtweet. This is a novel. Novels inspire empathy by putting you in the heads and the minds and the lives of its characters. We all know this, but what is it about the subtweet that feels so raw in its empathy? If you haven't read it, the subtweet tells the story of two 30-something musicians in Canada, in Toronto. They are two women, one of whom is a trans woman, but that is only mentioned, I counted twice in the book, the fact that she's a trans woman. It is not her defining feature whatsoever. It is relevant to a point, but it is not a defining characteristic. So many novels about trans characters being trans is a defining characteristic, and their life is often tragic. You can write a story about a trans person that is tragic, but try not to make the tragic elements because they are trans. There is tragedy in this book, and there is sorrow in this book, but it's not because she's trans. She is a trans woman who happens to be experiencing personal upset, personal tragedies, irrespective of her gender experience, and I think that's really great. That's how you write a well-rounded trans woman character and leave it to a trans woman to write a great trans woman character. Anyway, our two protagonists are Neela and Rukmini. Neela is kind of our main protagonist, I suppose, and Rukmini is the trans woman. Neela is a small-time artist, a very underground musician in Toronto who has written some stuff. One day, one of her songs is covered by Rukmini, who is a steadily growing, aspiring musician herself. She just covers this song, and she does it in a way that speaks to the popular zeitgeist. Neela likes writing more raw acoustic music, Rukmini writes more poppy electronic music, and her more poppy electronic cover of Neela's song explodes, and she is skyrocketed to fame. As a result, the two of them become friends, best friends, very, very quickly. They bond instantly and become inseparable. But then 
Rukmini gets invited by this very, very famous white pop star, this Taylor Swift type, to go on tour all around Europe, all around the US and Canada. She's bringing Rukmini because Rukmini has become famous for covering Neela's song. She's become not a one-hit wonder, but a pretty celebrated new pop artist because of this cover. She's the one that gets invited on tour, and off she goes. Their relationship is strained and complicated, and a lot of it revolves around the blend between real life and social media. And it's fascinating how Vivek Shreya blends these two worlds together in this book. If you exist online in a pretty heavy capacity, as I do, I live on Twitter, I'm on Twitter constantly. If you do that, it is impossible to separate your digital life and your real life. And you don't really have to. These things do exist in tandem. I have friends that I have met in real life and friends that I haven't met in real life, both of whom I talk to on Twitter, through Twitter, on a daily basis, DMing all the time, group chats, etc. And all of it is a valid form of social interaction. All of it is real social life. And Vivek Shreya knows this. And so when her characters are existing online, saying things online, tweeting things, all of it is relevant to real life. A lot of books and stories and films seem to have this message that your online life is fake, your online persona is not a real thing, it's, it's a caricature, it is invented, but you cannot invent it out of nothing. Our online experiences do not exist in a vacuum, they are emblematic of us. I have a friend who in real life is an absolute gem, and as soon as he's online, he acts like a troll. And I think, well, you know, that's his online persona. But it's coming from somewhere. It's a, it's a vent space for a lot of people. So this book blends Twitter life, Instagram life, with real life in an incredible way that again inspires empathy. These are things we can relate to in an online world. This is a digital generation. We exist on Twitter and Instagram as much as we do in real life, and you cannot escape those things. Vivek Shreya really gets that. And so as you read this, rather than it feeling like a cringe piece of YA that makes pop culture references to Twitter, it's a lot deeper than that. It is molding these two things together in an inescapable way that speaks to our real lived experiences of living online as much as we do offline, and that is beautiful. It is beautifully and elegantly done, and that is part of the reason that it inspires so much empathy, because you can relate to that. And when the relationship between Neela and Rukmini is rocked and twisted by subtweets and miscommunication online, it is completely relevant to our lived experience. Experiences. We have all made subtweets about people or experiences or events. We have all vented through Twitter, even when the people and things that we're venting about exist online and will see our tweets. We're doing this intentionally. It is playground gossip. It is writing in a diary that you know someone might find and read. It is still relevant to our daily life, and that's the empathy. The empathy also comes in the form of the relationship between Neela and Rukmini. These are two insecure women who feel similarly and misinterpret and miscommunicate constantly, as we all do as human beings. One is jealous of the other, but can't admit it. The other feels inferior to the first, but can't admit it. This is about our perspectives and experiences being warped by our bubbles that we live in, either as a group or even as an individual. These two women are constantly at odds because they're misinterpreting their own relationships. They don't see themselves the way other people see them. We don't see ourselves the way other people see us. And this is, you know, we, we, we talk about this with, with our, our looks, you know, you think you're ugly, but all your friends and your partner and your family, they all say, no, you're beautiful. Do we and can we accept that? And it goes deeper than that when it comes to our personalities and our personas and how people see us. And blah, 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 blah. It goes on and on and on. And again, all of that is explored so beautifully here. Even though our two protagonists are aspiring pop and rock stars, it is so grounded and relevant. And it also points out that even if you're an artist, even if you're rich and famous, you can still be subject to the same pathetic flaws that all of us have, where we get paranoid and it's hysterical. I made a joke tweet a few weeks ago about one of Matt Haig's tropes and how he writes, and he started tweeting about the exact thing that I mentioned, and I swear I was subtweeted by Matt Haig. I swear I was. He seems like the kind of guy who would search for himself on Twitter constantly. I didn't tag him in it. 
I don't think you have to with some people. Because writers, famous people, rich people are paranoid. And they all have ordinary personalities and they spend as much time on Twitter as we do. If you ever think, oh, I'm wasting all my time on Twitter and Instagram, so are famous people. So are rich people. And so that in itself is very, very relatable and that gets explored a lot in this book. These are people who are tweeting backstage before jumping out on stage in front of a huge crowd of roaring, chanting fans, screaming their music and their lyrics back at them. But two seconds earlier, they were panicked. They were on Twitter going, have I been subtweeted? Does my friend hate me? Our paranoias exist regardless of our state of mind and our state of success. And again, that is what inspires so much empathy with this book. Vivek Shreya does an incredible job of inspiring empathy because she understands the human experience so well. And she does it honestly and rawly. <laughs> Her way of exploring the relationship between our personal, online, digital, analog presences is immense. And the way that she makes sure that flawed characters engage with other flawed characters and we see both of their perspectives and we see that they're both valid and they're both damaged is absolutely fantastic. And then with this, the fact that she just tells you how she experiences life and you feel it and you see it even if you can't relate to it, you still understand it and you know that it's the truth and therefore it requires empathy from you as a reader. Vivek Shreya is an incredible writer. I need to read more of her fiction. I need to check out her music. She's great. Please check out both of these books if you haven't already. They inspire empathy so well. Thanks for watching. Join our Patreon and subscribe for books. <laughs> what was that?